Hi, and welcome to Run Tall with Tim. I'm Tim. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate the time that you and I get to spend together, so thanks for tuning in. And I hope wherever you are that you're happy, healthy, and staying safe. On today's video, I'm comparing two great daily trainers, both by Hoka. It's the Mach 4 versus the Mach 5. If you keep this up, then I'll let you in. Both versions of the Mach are considered to be lightweight daily trainers. And the Mach 4 was at the top of the list for many shoe reviewers last year as one of the best daily trainers for 2021, including myself. But in spite of that success, Hoka still saw fit to make a few changes, including a new midsole and making some changes to the upper. But did those changes make the shoe better or worse? And if you already own the Mach 4 or you're trying to decide between which of these two shoes to buy, is it worth paying the extra money to get the Mach 5? Well, those are the questions that we're going to try to answer today, so be sure to stick around. But before I get into it too far, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes I'm about to review for you. So let's do that. But then when we come back together, I'm going to take a real close look at the Hoka Mach 4 versus the Hoka Mach 5 to try to answer that all-important question, which shoe is right for you? If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Run Tall family. I'm really glad you're here and you found us on YouTube. Now, I post running shoe reviews, comparisons, and shoe battles weekly, but I also like to post other videos related to running as well. So if you enjoy watching running shoe reviews and other videos about running, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. So let's knock out some of the basics first. These are a neutral road shoe that I ordered true to size and they fit me perfectly. Now for me, that's a US men's size nine and they retail the Mach 4s for 130 US dollars. But because of the release of the Mach 5, right now you can find it on sale for a pretty substantial savings. I've seen them on Hoka's website, I think for just a little over a hundred dollars. Now the Mach 5, they retail for 140 US dollars and I purchased each of these shoes with my own money. Now the Mach 5s are slightly lighter than the Mach 4s. For men's size 9 on my scales, the Mach 5s weigh 7.7 .7 ounces or 218 grams, while the Mach 4 is coming in at 7.9 ounces or 222 grams. And now the same holds true for the women's version of the shoe. The Mach 5 is slightly lighter than the Mach 4. For a women's size 8, the Mach 5 is coming in at 6.8 ounces, while the Mach 4 weighs 7.1 ounces. On both the Hoka Mach 4 and the Hoka Mach 5, as well as the men and women's version of the shoes, feature a five millimeter offset from the heel to the toe, so that hasn't changed. The midsole material for the men's version remains the same as well, going from the Mach 4 to the Mach 5 in terms of the stack height or the spring measurement, which is what Hoka's using to report their midsole material now. Now they have 39 millimeters in heel, meaning your heel sets off the ground 39 millimeters and then 25 millimeters up in the forefoot. Now in the women's version, there was a slight change. In the heel of the women's Mach 4, they had 35 millimeter stack height. And then in the forefoot, it was 22 millimeters. When they moved to the Mach 5, they added just a tad there in the heel. So the spring measurement in the Hoka Mach 5 for the women is 36 millimeters in the heel and still 22 millimeters up in the forefoot. Now on both the Mach 4 and the Mach 5, they feature a dual density foam midsole. The top layer being a softer midsole material to land on, and then the bottom layer being a rubberized EVA foam that's much more durable that also acts as their outsole. So you can see it has no additional outsole rubber there to protect that midsole material. Now in the Hoka Mach 4, they featured their ProFly foam. Now this shoe is considered to be responsive, meaning that it is a bit firm, but if you enjoy the feel of the road contact when you run, this is a really good option. And even though it is a pretty firm midsole material, at least in my opinion anyway, because it's so smooth, that kind of leveled it out. So I didn't feel like I was pounding the pavement so much as gliding across it. And these are a shoe that you can definitely pick up the pace. They are a quick shoe, as I mentioned. They are a lightweight daily trainer. And some of that quickness 
comes from the responsiveness of the midsole material. Even though it is firm, you're still getting some energy return. But at least for me, it was how smooth it was because it made it easier for me to turn my legs over just a little bit faster when I wanted to pick up the pace. Now with Hokamak 5s, they went from Profly to Profly Plus midsole for that softer layer that you're landing on, which is lighter and with a lot more bounce and energy return. So in my opinion, they took a good shoe and they made it great by adding a little bit of fun to it as well. That bounce makes these a little bit more fun to run in than with the Mach 4s, which again, yeah, I love the Mach 4. I, don't, you know, I absolutely love it to run in. But these have a little bit more, just a little bit more something when you're striking the ground and moving through your gait cycle. I feel like I'm getting more energy return because of the bounce, but it didn't do away or they didn't uh, eliminate that smooth feeling that I get when I run in these. So they, they kept what I thought was great about the Mach 4 and they made it just a little bit better. So let's take a look at the overall geometry of the midsole, see if they made any changes there. So we can see that they maintain this swallowtail heel design. They do have a bit of a heel bevel here and they have an early stage meta rocker. Now this of course is the Mach 4. But as we look at the Mach 5, pretty much the same story. Swallowtail heel design, heel bevel, early stage meta rocker. In both cases, both shoes are really fun and smooth to run in. So since we have these flipped over, let's go ahead and take a look at the outsole, see if anything's changed there. Now, only a slight change. Pretty much it remains the same in terms of the overall design of the outsole. Again, that rubberized EVA foam. They still have that same cutout that's in the midfoot section of the shoe, although that has changed aesthetically, but that's about it. Otherwise, the outsole pretty much remains the same. So let's compare the upper on these. Now with the Mach 4, you know, they have a lot of perforations there. I felt like the fit was good. I always was able to get locked in and secure across the midfoot. In terms of the length of the shoe, in both cases, I had just about a thumb width from my longest toe, which is, in my case, my big toe to the end of the shoe. So the fit was good on both of these. I feel like the Mach 5 does have a little bit more room up in the toe box to be able to display my toes. In terms of the number of perforations or how cool it is underfoot, I think the Mach 4s run a little bit hotter. And that's because there's just more material there. Now, in, in both shoes, they're using an engineered mesh upper. With the Hoka Mach 5s, they're using what they're calling a Cre Creole uh, Jacquard mesh upper, which refers to the method in which they wove that material together. So it just feels like it's a little less material there for that air to have to get through to get to your feet to keep them cool and comfortable when you're out running. And the perforations themselves are larger, which allows more air to flow. So you have a little less material and bigger perforations, all of which work together to make these uh, make the Hoka Mach 5s run just a little bit cooler underfoot. And I like the colorways that they came out with this year over the options that we had available to us last year. So taking a look at the lace enclosure system or the eyelet chain, really didn't change much from one year to the next. They both have a very traditional eyelet system going on here. The one note that I will make is that with the Hokamak 4, I felt like I sometimes had to really cinch down that eyelet chain, that lace enclosure system so much so that it was getting pretty close to one another across, uh, across the midfoot. Where in so far in the Mach 5, I haven't really had that issue, but both did a good job and I feel like I got locked in and secure in each case. So let's take a look at the tongue because they did make a little change here. With the Hoka uh, Mach 4, you can see that it's got a bit more padding on the tongue. And pretty much the entire tongue is padded and they do have this pass-through loop here. Now, both are gusseted tongues, so you can see that they have gusset materials here on the Mach 4. And again, they've got that little pass-through loop. I never really understood why they needed or felt like they needed to have that because if the tongue is already gusseted, it's not going anywhere. So I don't know that you necessarily needed to have the pass through uh, to keep it in place. Now they did do away with that with the Hoka Mach 5 and the tongue got thinner. So the tongue went on a little bit of a diet and instead of having a fully padded, a padded tongue, they really only have padding that runs right up the center of the tongue and then there across the top where your laces are gonna come in, into play. But in either case, I didn't have any issues feeling the laces cutting across the top of my foot. And again, I did get locked in pretty easily. And again, the Mach 5s maintain the same gusset type of uh, material as what we found in the Mach 4. So let's take a look at the padding around the heel collar and the tab. 
not much change here. It's got pretty much the same amount of padding in both shoes, more than enough to keep me comfortable while I was out running. I didn't have any kind of hot spots in either shoe. It felt really comfortable. And both shoes do feature an Achilles heel flare here. I always like that. It does feel pretty comfortable. You know, it took me a while to get used to it when they first came out with it. Maybe it was the looks, but now that I'm used to it, I do enjoy that heel flare. And you can always use it as a pull tab to help get your shoes on. And that remains true for the Hoka Mach 4 as well. So let's see how much structure that they have back in the heel counter. So I'm going to start with the Hoka Mach 4, put it up on my shoulder and give it the pinch test. And you can see already that it's got a pretty good amount of plastic overlay that goes around the heel. And as I try to pinch it together, there's a lot of structure to help hold your heel in place. So let's see how the Mach 5, uh, how that turns out. So I'm going to put that up on my shoulder, give that the pinch test. And even though they don't have that outside plastic overlay like we just saw, there's still, I would say, about the same amount of structure here. In either case, my heel uh, always felt like it was uh, solidly in place. I didn't have any heel slippage either up or down or side to side. And it has both of them have a nice heel pocket for my heel to set in. Both of these versions, I think, make a great choice as a daily trainer. But with the additions or the changes that they made to the Hoka Mach 5, I think they're just a tad bit more versatile. Because that midsole now is softer to run in, it makes them a good choice to pick up even on recovery days or on the long run. And I think you're going to be really comfortable doing that. And the changes that they made to the upper to allow that air to flow a little better, make your feet a little bit more cool and comfortable when you're running. I think that the Hoka Mach 5 is just a slightly better and more fun shoe to run in than the Hoka Mach 4. So is it worth this spending the extra money to get the Mach 5 over the Mach 4, especially considering that you can pick it up, you can pick up the Mach 4 for what $103 on uh, Hoka's website. In my opinion, it is. I, I absolutely love the Hoka Mach 5. And I think that's a shoe that's definitely worth taking a look at. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim.